scientific advances have enabled us to discover a range of fascinating events. These discoveries can increase our understanding of past, present and future events regarding our planet. With climate change such a hot topic, these discoveries can help us delve into what happened in the past and what could happen in the future. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three recent scientific discoveries. Ancient tree with record of Earth's magnetic field reversal in its rings discovered. The Earth's magnetic field is a key component to life on Earth, and this is believed to have changed multiple times since the formation of the planet, with little understood about how it works. The movement of the magnetic North Pole is currently accelerating, heading from the Canadian Arctic to Russia. Looking back at the last magnetic field reversal event could give insights into what and how it will happen as it continues to progress. In 2019, an ancient tree in New Zealand was unearthed that gave a glimpse at the most recent near-polar reversal. The tree, Anagathis australis, was uncovered during an excavation for a geothermal power plant expansion in Nagawa, on the North Island. The uncovered Kauri tree is 16 metres long and weighs 60 tonnes, and was preserved in clay around 9 metres underground. The tree was part of a large forest that covered a significant part of the North Island. It is believed that only 4% of this tree remains after Europeans came to the island and cut down a vast number of trees in 1820. Tree rings can give insights into the past. Dendrochronology has been used to study climate change, date artifacts, and much more. The tree is believed to be between 41,000 and 42,500 years old, and the rings suggest that during its 1500 years the tree lived through the Lachon excursion, where the magnetic North Pole drifted down to the southern hemisphere and back up again. This is the first time a tree that lived through the event has been discovered. The tree is now being studied, aiming to give scientists an idea of what will happen during the next reversal or near reversal. Chris Turney of the University of South Wales, head of the team analysing the tree, has stated that because the Earth's magnetic field has a major effect on how much radiocarbon is formed in the upper atmosphere, these analyses will allow us to investigate the magnitude and rate of change when the magnetic field reversed during the Lachon, something not possible before and of great interest given recent changes in the Earth's magnetic field. What will this tree reveal about the last pole reversal, and potentially the next one? Will it warn us about climate change? Ozone hole near South Park shrinks to smallest size ever. Humanity's impact on the Earth is well known, and our impact on the ozone layer is one that has incited significant action since it was growing year on year. In 2019, the hole in the ozone layer near the South Pole shrunk to its smallest size since 1982. It is not actually a hole, but merely an area with depleted levels of ozone, specifically an area in which ozone concentrations drop below the historical threshold of 222 Dobson units. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, known as NOAA, Polar orbiting satellites are used to monitor the ozone hole. According to NASA and the NOAA, the Antarctic ozone hole was affected by abnormal weather patterns in 2019, limiting ozone depletion which led to the smallest ozone hole since 1982. Ozone, which is comprised of three oxygen atoms, occurs naturally in the stratosphere and adds protection to the planet from ultraviolet solar radiation, which can cause cataracts and skin cancer. Stratospheric ice clouds form in the Antarctic when temperatures fall below minus 78 Celsius, and these clouds promote production of chlorine and bromine, which when combined with sunlight in the Antarctic spring causes a reaction that leads to a loss of ozone, resulting in the Antarctic ozone hole. The annual ozone hole reached its peak extent of 6.3 million square miles on September 8, 2019 and then shrank to less than 3.9 million square miles for the remainder of September and October. Unusually warm weather led to the smaller ozone depletion. Similar weather patterns in 1988 and 2002 
also resulted in atypically small ozone holes. Normal weather conditions tend to result in a maximum area of about 8 million square miles in late September or early October. The 2019 weather systems were unusually strong, warming the Antarctic stratosphere. It was 16 Celsius warmer than average during September, a time where ozone destruction is normally at its peak. According to NASA, it was the warmest September for 40 years. The Antarctic polar vortex was also weakened, moving its center, which is normally over the South Pole. This slowed vortex rotation, allowing air to sink in the lower stratosphere, which impacted the ozone hole in two ways. It minimized the persistence of polar stratospheric clouds and allowed ozone-rich air from elsewhere in the southern hemisphere to travel to above the Antarctic ozone hole area. There is a massive variability each year with the size of the ozone hole. Whilst 2019 was the smallest on record since 1982, the 2020 hole is above average for the last decade. On September 20th, 2020, the annual ozone hole reached its peak area at 9.6 million square miles, driven by persistent cold temperatures and strong circumpolar winds, similar to the value recorded in 2018. However, by approximately 2070, scientists expect the ozone hole to shrink back to the size it was in 1980. Astronomers identified 24 superhabitable planets. It is possible there are planets out there that are more suited to life than our very own Earth. Astronomers have identified 24 potential superhabitable planets that were the subject of a study published in the journal Astrobiology called In the Search for a Planet Better Than Earth, Top Contenders for a Superhabitable World. The planets have the potential to support more biodiversity and biomass than the planet we currently call home. It is worth noting that habitability does not mean these planets definitely have life as the conditions for the origin of life is potentially more stringent than the persistence of life merely the conditions that would be conducive to life as we know it. Washington State University scientist Dirk schultz maku partnered with astronomers René Heller of the Max Planck Institute for Solar System Research and Edward Gwinnon of Villanova University to create a superhabitable criteria to determine which of the 4,500 exoplanets outside of our solar system qualify. The key criteria of a superhabitable planet are an age of 5 to 8 billion years, a mass of 1.5 times that of Earth, and 10% larger, a surface temperature averaging 5 Celsius higher than Earth, a moist atmosphere with 25 to 30% O2 levels, scattered land and water distributed with lots of shallow water areas and archipelagos, a large moon at a moderate distance, and has plate tectonics as well as a strong protective geomagnetic field. The researchers looked at G-stars similar to our Sun, which has a lifespan of around 10 billion years, which is relatively short-lived for a star. They also looked at K-dwarf stars, which are cooler and have lifespans between 20 and 70 billion years. This will give orbiting planets more time to advance. None of the 24 planets met all of the criteria, but one, 3,000 light-years away, met four, which would make it more habitable than Earth. Dirk schultz mckuch said that we are so focused on finding a mirror image of Earth that we may overlook a planet that is even more well-suited for life. The study's authors argue that, with regard to the search for extrasolar life, potentially superhabitable planets may deserve higher priority for follow-up observations than most Earth-like planets. The study could help focus future observation efforts, such as NASA's James Webb Space Telescope, the Louvior Space Observatory, and the European Space Agency's Plato Space Telescope. We are currently unable to get to any of these superhabitable planets, but they give an idea of where to look in the future, the potential to see if there are any conditions to create or sustain life elsewhere and answer the age-old question of are we alone in the universe? But what do you make of these three recent discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.